get started with this million dollar biller, Rich Rosen, to talk about the insights and mindset of how to succeed at that level, and really just the blunt truth of how to win in recruiting. Two things, actually three things. First of all, Atomic Habits, the book of the month. Make sure you're checking it out and join the elite recruiter community because we're talking about that at the end of the month. Secondly, sign up for the Recruiting Growth Summit. Link is in the show notes. It is going to be the best event to help you grow your career in 2024. It is free. We have some of the absolute best speakers that are going to be there to just help level up the entire community. And third, if you've been friends with Rich Rosen for a while, you know that he has given and given so much into the community. He is asking for a vote. If you can help vote for him, I'll have the directions of what to do in the show notes to so definitely check that out. So hope you guys enjoy this podcast. So welcome to the podcast, Rich. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right. So normally I start the podcast kind of like doing a walkthrough of like how you even got into recruiting. But for the listeners, go back and listen to episode 20. We already did that. So gonna gonna save you save, save you on that, Rich. But yeah, for the listeners, go back to episode twenty. We are gonna do a deep dive in what it takes to be a top recruiting biller. So, real quick, looking at your numbers, and the, I, 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 Rich shared this. I think personally, I pulled this away like the second I saw this last year in twenty twenty three, which was a super interesting year. He had over 9,283 total calls. Over 4,000 of those were outbound. Over 4,000 of those were inbound. Over 466 hours on the phone, to over almost 3,000 text messages, almost 8,000 e uh, emails received, almost 18,000 emails sent. In one of the most brutal years in recruiting. So first of all, how did 2023 treat you, Rich? Oh, that's like a... Baby's diaper. <laughs> I'm dealing with that now. Yeah, bring it back. Here you go. I'm gonna. Last year was brutal, man. I mean, honestly, all those numbers were done pretty much in nine months too, which just makes it even more crazy. Um, because between, you know, losing my dad, I um, you know, it took a lot of vacation time, and you know, it's just it was a brutal year. I mean, honestly, I, I, you know, anyone I'm in tech, you know, those, I'm in software sales and. Startup tech got crushed last year. It was, you know, three steps forward, two steps back, you know, then maybe a tick in the head, another way, way over. So it was, uh, I lost four deals last year, four deals between verbal and written. Wow. Like the executive got fired between the two stages. Wait, four deals were lost between four the two. Like, yeah. Wait, from Basically, the executive. Midnight and one o'clock in the morning, essentially, call it. I mean, it was like 160 grand in commission. I mean, Holy that gives you the, you know, way of the year. I mean, it's just, I mean, honestly, I'll, I'll give you one more. I'm, I actually did a favor for a personal friend the end of the year, which just kind of sums up the whole year. Been on vacation with this guy. We're getting screwed on the commission. That's, that's 2023 in a nutshell. Uh -huh. How's 2024 yeah. looking so far? Oh, my 2023. <laughs> so, 2024 will be good. Be, you got to be positive. 2024 will be good. Um, you know, we're just getting back in the saddle. We just got a bunch of new jobs in, or I say we, but it's me. Um, just got a bunch of jobs in. And, you know, I think 2024 will ultimately be a good year. Uh, okay. You know, I do. Um, yeah, and listen, in this job, you've got to stay positive. It's so easy to, uh, to get negative. And honestly, it's fun to bitch with other recruiters about, you know, <laughs> more story, disaster you're right into. Um, but I, I think you being in the startup world, you just run into more insanity than any other sector. And whoever thinks placing sales guys is easy is out of their asking mind, especially sales guys within the startup, uh, where you deal with a bunch of people who are relatively clueless and, and um, you know, are fighting for their own job half the time, let alone. Well, funding and everything else. And let me, real quick, like, I just ran through some of your activity numbers. Those, do those activity numbers look pretty like, like year over year? Is that kind of like what, you, what you're hitting? Um, you know, I was trying to go through those actually. I couldn't find last year's numbers. But I would get, I would guess they're, if you extrapolate it for the full year, I would think they're pretty similar. Okay. 
the buildings were down, you know, way down, but the, um, but the overall output, I'm guessing, boy, if you, if you had another quarter onto that, it probably would have been about the same. Okay. And so one of the things that I, I see with top billers is there's always massive action. Absolutely. And massive, consistent action. Like, what does your typical day look like when you're like, attacking these open positions? Yeah. Um, so my, you know, I consider my, my day start, like where, where I differ than most recruiters, and I've said this on their, I think probably earlier on your podcast too, and other shows, they, you know, my day starts at night. I'm like, you know, and when then you got a baby, you get to really sort of balance it all out. Uh, thankfully, babies sleep a lot, hopefully. <laughs> the, uh, hopefully. The, like uh, soon? <laughs> little nightclub, little nightclub. <laughs> Or bourbon, bourbon's water, both of them. But the, um, but you know, literally, it all comes down to planning, and most recruiters don't plan, and that's the okay. Separate. Pause, pause, pause. Okay, so when you say planning, I feel like you've said planning, planning, planning. I feel like your planning is different than most other people planning. When most people are planning, they're, you know, hopping in their planner and doing yeah. that. When you say planning, what do you actually mean? So planning for me is, you know, I mean the literal sense of, Hey, listen, who am I going to call tomorrow? It's like, if you work out and like, I don't know about you, if you go to the gym and you don't have a plane, it's a useless workout for most people. It's like, yeah. Oh, they're a little trial, they're a little buy, I'll run the treadmill for 10 minutes. And you know, you really do nothing. You get yourself busy for an hour. Um, but if you want to go have a heavy leg day or, or bench press or whatever, you're going to have a heavy chest day or whatever, you know, you got to have a plan out. What's your routine going to be? I, at least for me, that's how I work. And recruiting is the same thing. It's like, if I don't have a plan, I am pretty useless. And a plan means to me, you know, say like Sunday night, I'm going to sit there and schedule, and that schedule calls hour by hour, but who do I want to talk to? Who do I want to reach out to? And that means, you know, I'm going to build a list. They're all going to get emails automated on the email, my email campaign. And I'm going to follow up the next day with the calls and then texts and then email. And then call, and then you know if I'm desperate, LinkedIn. But you know it's it's the you know, but it's it's the rinse, rinse, wash, repeat. You know every, and again, it is this nothing in recruiting is black and white. So this isn't like 100 percent of the people I'm bringing the list. I'm going to call and email every day, but there are people that I will call every day because I know they're hiring. I know they're you know I can help them. I know I've got a guy on my desk, like an NPC over there, and make a placement in 10 seconds. Um, you know, in this, you got to prioritize who do the, who do you call? Who do you follow up with? Who do you, you know, you call once and later, just leave it alone. So real quick, taking a step back, you start your day knowing exactly who you're going to talk to. So exactly. Well, no, I mean, I know who I'm going to call. <laughs> or who to call, who to call. Yeah. I'm uh, sorry. Who, to, who yeah. to call. So like, so I use Crelay as my database. So right. I created, you know, a job, every, if it's candidates. You know, it doesn't matter if it's BD or, or candidate outreach. If it's candidate outreach, I go to job A and everyone's on a pipeline list. If they've responded from the email I sent the night before, they automatically move to follow up via outplay. And I then, um, excuse me, I then, you know, call the follow up people first. If there's someone I think that's a must call, you know, I, uh, I put them in a must call category and, you know, there you go down the list, my admin. Uh, I mean, I get an admin that works a whopping 15 hours a week and, you know, he's basically in charge of finding the phone numbers and contact info for, for these folks. So okay. he puts, I'll build, you know, I'll build a list. Usually, you know, 90% of the time I build a list every so often, I'll let him build a list and try it out if it's very targeted. And, you know, he gets a list, he goes and finds those people, puts them into the database, which automatically then using outplay is automatically vacuumed up into uh into outplay and the campaign starts oh nice just so do you have outplay like hooked up with uh Crelate then oh outplay built a beautiful integration for me years ago when i got them hooked up i said it was an AppSumo deal and um and then that and they're actually even going to make their their integration better shortly i just did a call with them a few weeks a few weeks ago um, but it is hands down the best integration out there and like i get other companies trying to you know get caught up with it too because the bigger boys, like the sendouts and the, not sendouts, but Interstellar and Woodpecker, their integrations stink comparatively. Yeah, they do. And <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. And so there's, there's another program I like too. I'll, I'll tell you this in a second. But like um, Outplay 
I don't, I'm not forced to work in their program, all those other campaign systems. I got to work in my database or, and, or their, their database. And that's a pain in the ass. Um, Outplay, they built a seamless integration. And if you're a Crelate, PCR, um, Bullhorn, I think they even do it for now. Tell them I sent you, I don't get any for it, but I just like the company to succeed. Sequoia even funded them now. Um, but it's, it's just a great, it's a great program. The integration is hands down better than anything else on the market. You can do, uh, I don't use all the features, but you can do uh, voicemail drops with it. You can do all sorts of AI with it, you know, writing AI. It's a million different tools that's with it. So it's an awesome program. But most importantly, it's a massive time saver. People waste so much. This, there's two ways I see recruiters wasting tons of time. One, you know, by working in two systems, total waste. Or they actually handwrite their notes during conversations and then type them into the computer. If you can't type or you can't use uh, some kind of recorder like MetaView or Track AI or whatever, find a new job. <laughs> it's just, you can never be productive in this. And it's very simple. <laughs> I get, get I see people do this. I'm like, you are you insane? I mean, how much time wasted is handwriting notes to then write them back into the system? Is okay, it, so you've you come into your day, you know exactly who you're going to call. The mm -hmm. list has been built out. When people talk about planning, you are actively figuring out who you are going to hit up. Mm -hmm. And I think that was like, don't don't laugh at this, Rich. It took me about a year and a half, maybe two years of me knowing you to figure out what you said as planning is different than what most recruiters know as planning. So like every time you're like, well, just plan better. I'm like, like, oh, wait, crap. Like, well, okay, now I get it. You're like targeted a list. Because like, <laughs> they make people plan and they just, they, they're really just planning to fail because they're not really planning. They're just saying, I'm going to do this instead of doing it. It's like, you know, it's like cleaning your email box. It's like, you know, either, what is it? Delete it, you know, d you know, delete it, uh, well, I forget the three D's. Something like delete it, deliver it, or or um, delegate. Delegate. There you go. You know, I mean that that's it, and that's the same thing. It's otherwise you get buried in email. You open it, do something with it. You yeah. know, otherwise you're just going to keep going back to it. And where is that going to get you? So. Okay, so you've been doing this year after year. You're probably one of the hardest working people that I've met. Now, I love that you just shared the secret that you're also now one of the smartest people, working people I've met <laughs> with all your technology. Because oh my god, like. Going for because I use Create and I use Woodpecker and I go from point A to point B. Good outplay. Tell Lex I sent you. <laughs> I actually have their LTD, so I'm going to like jump into that. <laughs> so, but when it comes to even with how, excuse my language, shitty 2023, 2023 was in the startup mm -hmm. tech sector, how did you stay driven all this time? You know, um, it's a great question. I think it's just, it's, it, it's kind of just routine, you know, like I'm, it, 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 there's, there's certain things I'm a creature of happiness. production. I go to the gym every morning. If I'm bored, I'll go back to the gym in the afternoon. <laughs> if, if I, and just during the day, you just work. Like, I don't know what to do during the day. I, de I, when I train and talk to other recruiters, I don't understand what they do during the day. Like I'll go to an, like every, I used to go to an office every once in a while to, to, to go help some buddies of mine get a term. And I would sit there and do my work and I, they would be like, dude, you're like the loudest person in our office. And I'm like, well, why is no one else making noise? <laughs> I'm like, everyone else is too busy sending emails telling me cold calling doesn't work. You know, yet I'm the one that's closing all the deals, cold calling <laughs> and sending emails and sending texts. Like you can't just rely a one method, they all suck, quite frankly, but they're all effective if done, you know, in a, in a pattern. And I think, you know, you just, so I like now, if I don't get on the phone, I feel like my day is an utter waste. So I need to be moving, you know, and it's just like, I, I just, it's constant motions, total ADD driven motion. And I think that's, Really, the secret is just you're planned. You know you want you, you want to hit. You got certain goals you want to hit. I mean, we're building a house. We got got two kids in college soon, shortly. You know, doesn't matter what you make. When you kids kids get to go to college, you'll see that money gets sucked up pretty damn quick. Um, you know, so you should start saving now, and you should start putting your kid on your uh, your your payroll so you can start funding his four hundred one his retirement plan already. Hold another conversation for after. <laughs> but the uh, 
Okay, I already have a, a, a investment account set up for him. So <laughs> perfect. It, well, it will hopefully be enough to cover a month of college because it's going to be insane by the time your kid's there. It is bananas now. But um, <laughs> so, keep billing. <laughs> but it's, uh, it, you know, but I, I think it's just, it's just the, it's just, this is what our job is. So it's like, like to me, I think there are a lot of careers they take these jobs as like part time. They don't do it as a full time job, but they don't see the career. They don't even see the big money you can really, really, really make. And I just think it's a game. This whole job is a total game. For me, I'm competitive. I hate to lose. I literally just had an internal recruiter ask me because I was yelling at her about um, my candidates not. They got to a final and they didn't get the job. And I'm like, what the hell happened? I've been asking for feedback the whole time. Everything is great. And she's like, Rich, do you? She literally puts it in the text. She's like, do you actually expect to win every deal? And so like, yeah, that's kind of why we do this, you know, and I do win every deal. I don't lose that often. And, you know, I send good people. I expect good companies to hire my good people. Um, so it's, it's, it's a lot of that. It's just, it's drive. It's just, you want to make money. You want to win. You got to, you've got goals. You've got a baby now. You got, you know, extra mouths to feed it. You've got pressure, you know, and as they grow older, man, life doesn't get cheaper. So I don't understand. Like I talk to guys in California all the time. They make like a hundred grand. They take a year off. And I'm like hundred grand, not a lot of money in today's world. Sorry. You know, even Obama thought you needed, you know, was nuts with this 250 was rich, you know, but <laughs> so I'm trying to live in New York city with 250. Um, you know, so I don't know. You got, you just, it's so we're hired for man. We're your sales guys. It's all about the drive and the hunger. When you say like a lot of recruiters are really missing out on the big money, like is it because they've never seen the big money? Is it because they've never been around the big money? Like, what, what do you think that is? I think most people it's because they've not, they, they haven't been around it and they don't really realize that they're very self-limiting where they work on low end deals. They're happy with, you know, we hear always hear about the recruiters taking a 10 or 15% fee, which if you do, you should be shot. The, um, it's a horrible way to run your business as a bottom feeder. So don't do it. <laughs> so. It's, uh, you'll get more respect if you charge higher fees, number one. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, they live check to check still. They get desperate and they just, you know, they, they see a $10,000 check come in and they're like, oh my God, you know, and it's great when you're, you know, 22. Yeah. But if you've got a mortgage, baby, car payments, you know, you want to go on nice vacations, whatever. Eesh. You know, all that stuff's expensive, man. You want to pay for college. <laughs> so like a recruiter that wants to change that mindset and change that drive, like what, what, what do they need to do? Like, how do they, you change that? One, I think the easiest way to change your mindset is, is you ever heard of the rule of five? You, you know, it's, I think that goes for everything. Intelligence, salary, income, ex life experience. Um, like, you know, I know, like if people don't know what it is, you you're, you're your income is the average of the five people you hang around the most. Your intelligence is generally people you hang around with five people you hang around the most. You're the, you're the average of that five. And you can do it for almost anything. But I know once I got into the pinnacle, pinnacle society, um, my billing went way up and most people's do, um, that go and get into pinnacle because you're surrounded by top recruiters. You don't want to for be those, there. for those that don't know what pinnacle is, which there's a lot of people out there. What is pinnacle society? So Pinnacle Society, um, I'm actually on the board, uh, currently on the board, actually, Pinnacle. Pinnacle is honestly the most amazing group I've been a part of. Um, it is a group of big billers. I think, I think now it's, you got to bill like a half a million or 600,000 for three of the past five years. Uh, and you got to have at least five years of experience in recruiting. Um, so you, you know, you're the top 1% billers, you know, you're a giver, everyone in that group generally wants to help other recruiters become better recruiters and better the industry. So you get, you get a great, it's, I play sales guys. So I have an extra fondness for it because, you know, we're all sales guys, whether those who are listening want to admit that or not, we're all salespeople, not social workers. And, but you could be a salesperson with a heart and the pinnacle society, it is not only great billers, but they're great givers. They always, they're super supportive of everyone. Um, it's, it's almost like a fraternity in many respects, because you go to these conferences twice a year and these people are friends. You go to their, their weddings, their bar mitzvahs, their, you know, you know, 
more about their life than their spouse sometimes does. You become super close to these folks. And if you're down, you had a bad month, you know, you got someone that, that can call and pick you up and vice versa. You know, it just, it, it, if you're a trainer, it should be everyone's goal to get into the pinnacle society. Um, not only is the training fantastic, the camaraderie is amazing and you're surrounded with top billers, which is only going to drive your billing. I think last year, um, I don't know about 23, I know 22. I think there were like 36 people that over a million dollars, something like that. I, I mean, out of 80 people in the group at any given time, it's limited to 80. Um, but it's just the best of the best. And I mean, tons of people did close to, I mean, one guy did, you know, over 2 million. Um, you know, I mean, it just, it, it's just an amazing, amazing, it's an amazing group of people, um, you know, that. Anyway, it's really, it's just, you should strive to be there. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of learning. And it just will make you even better than you already are by the time you get there. Okay. So let's just say like you crushed 600K last year or your goal is to get to 600K. Mm -hmm. You want to get around with those top billers. And it, I know Pinnacle has this like high levels. Like it's hard to get into Pinnacle. Like what what do you do to, on your way to get around those kind of people? Um, You know, I think, you know, you... You, tr you try to seek them out of conferences. A lot of us are at like naps and um, things like that. Number one, you know, friend them on Facebook. If, they, if they're, you know, you see like, you know, Jeremy Sizemore is a big one. He's on Facebook a ton. Jeremy's awesome. Um, you know, uh, um, uh, who is it? Uh, I'm totally blank on her name. Um, but, you know, Catherine, she, she just, she's actually in your space. She's a uh, defense mm -hmm. contract. So. Um, you know, people like that, they're just, they're, they want, they want to help other recruiters. They want to be part of this industry and be more than just, you know, a biller. I mean, it, that's great, but it's fun to help. You know, it's fun to see people grow. And, you know, I love when I get calls, you know, I'm saying, Hey, listen, you gave me this advice, and I, you know, close a $200,000 deal or whatever. Um, I mean, it's, it's a great feeling. Like I'm not a great teacher, I don't think, but I like to help where I can help. And it's, it's fun to see people, you know, actually say, oh, they tried it to work and, you know, they're better for it. So, you know, but I think you just, you, you, you want to seek out good people, whether it's just either by email, you don't want to drive them crazy, start calling off with these good recruiters and pinnacles. So don't do that. But, you know, they're going to get back down to email and say, if you got a question or, you know, whatever, shoot them out on Facebook or whatever, they'll, they, they, they want to get back to you. They want, you know, we, you know, everyone wants to see everyone do better in that group. And that's one of the things that makes it worthwhile. But wherever you live, like you said, you're near Scott Love now, a great recruiter, you know, I mean, grab a, go grab a coffee. You know, I mean, it's like, that's the thing. Well, you know, I, find the people in your area. And, I, um, not going to lie, I absolutely love grabbing you like uh, a glass of wine with him and just kind of picking his brain. The guy yeah. knows so much. Oh my God, he's awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, but that's cool. But it's, and then you're smart to do it. You take advantage of the resources that, that, and the, the opportunities you're given, you know, it's, um, you know, it was fine. I was on it. I was on vacation in uh, Australia over the summer and we just randomly got sat at a table, like under the stars in the middle of the outback desert in Australia, in Uluru, big giant rock out, out there. And, uh, who sits next to us is the founder of founding managing partner of Silicon Valley bank and his buddy. Who was another tech tech VC startup? Which is like it's I can go awesome. Yeah. We ended up addressing them the next two nights and and I got some business out of them from that. And I mean, but you know, you take what you can get, right? It's um, you know, you got Scott there, I, I got the founder, these these tech fed, these VC billionaires. I'm like, what well, you, you, you life happens for a reason, right? So absolutely. Absolutely. And even you know, it, it, listen, the best way to get better is get better. Learn, take classes, take training, you know, seek out, you know, people that are better than you that you can learn from. It's a, it's not, not, not too hard. People just don't. And I know there's a lot of recruiters that are afraid to hire a coach. I know you've hired multiple coaches. Mm -hmm. How's that impact been? Um, it's been great. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I do a lot of work, like, you know, I, I work, I've done a lot of podcasts with a lot of coaches, but I've done coaching with like Trish Tampkin at Morris Essential. Um, you know, I do stuff with, with Mark Whitby. Um, you know, I took Dave's, Dave's course before. I think mean, you can learn from everyone. And that's the thing that makes, I think, great recruiters and, or great anyone in any field better is they're always opening to learning and getting better. 
Um, I mean, once you think you know it all, you're done, especially in recruiting. I mean, honestly, I've been doing this for 28 years. I'm still trying to figure out how to write that perfect email, leave that perfect voicemail. You know, half the time it sounds like shit, but you know what? It gets some kind of response because it's authentic. Um, so like if you read my emails, you would laugh and be like, just no fucking way this guy sent this stuff out. Um, like Trish Tanker la- and, and Mark both laugh at me at every pinnacle meeting when they are speaking that they make fun of my writing. So well, thank God for chat CPT. But, <laughs> but you know what? All my dumb errors, um, they all work and they look real. So but <laughs> which they, some of them might be. <laughs> you know, so well, you don't have to kill yourself with perfection. So you would recommend hi- hiring a coach? hundred percent. Listen, I mean, if you're stuck in an area, yeah. why not? I mean, y- you're going to, like, you, you think about how much did you invest in wine and st- learning wine, drinking wine, <laughs> you know, you're going to put 20, $25,000, uh, <laughs> maybe more. <I'm> not sure. <laughs> like we, we actually have wine storage, uh, like a wine storage facility in DC. So don't even oh, go down God. there. That's, that's on our phone. <laughs> it has its own insurance policy. Oh my God. Oh yeah. yeah. That's awesome though. It's good. I just, it, it, anyone that's got hobbies is good though. You need any, any kind of hobby. And I used to have a cousin, I think I told you, used to have a wine, used to have a wine shop in uh, Alexandria. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, but listen, I mean, coaching 100%, you got to get better. And for what it costs, it's really not that much in the grand scheme of things. It's expensive today. But the return, if you follow the steps and it's the, and it's the right trainer for you, like Danny Cahill and, um, Whitby and Trish, they're all great. You know, there's, there's several trainers I think are good. And then I think there's a, a lot that aren't, but you got to find the right one for you. And it definitely should not be the cheapest one not because they're cheap. I mean, they could be great and cheap, but don't base it on the cost. Um, and I get nothing like, <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be very clear if I'm getting paid for something, I'm not getting anything that these guys. Other than, you know, little access here and there, but the, I just, yeah, they're, they're good. And depending on what you need, they'll have, they have a different, um, style and what works for me may not work for Ben or whatever else. So, uh, you're going to find what works for you and it's totally worthwhile. Uh, and you should never be, especially for solo, like I am, you never should be status quo and, you know, and, and. The only reason why I want to bring that up is because so often, like we, you know, you think about this million dollar bill or like on this pinnacle, like so far away, like this guy must be doing everything right. This guy must know every Look, single thing. Not uh, even Rich, you know everything, right? <laughs> you must know like everything. Be my wife. <laughs> but I've I've seen you time after time, like in these like like you know in these groups and in these conversations where you know I, I'm not commenting. I'm just kind of just like hanging out. And you're just like, go talk to this person. Go talk to this person. This person helped helped me. Yeah. This person helped me do this. So yeah, no, I mean, I think it's it's good. Everyone, I mean, listen, you got if you want to make a lot of money, lose the ego. I mean, like thinking you're the coolest kid in school and made the most money is not going to make you the most money. You know, it. You know, I I don't need to be the smartest. I probably shouldn't be the smartest in any room, and I shouldn't be the richest in any room. So you know. It's, you know, I don't, you know, to me, it does, I don't care where I learn from as long as I learn. And then it goes back to Pinnacle, why it's such a great resource. And even, I'm going to tell you, probably, I bet you half the people in Pinnacle are in some kind of coaching group, you know? So, I mean, plenty of million dollar bills are in coaching groups. That's good to know. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not, everyone acts like it's a, you know, it's, it's like an, like it's an embarrassment. Like you didn't know, no, it's actually a badge of honor to be like, Hey, listen, I learned, I don't, who cares? Happy to share the wealth and, you know, put my spin on it. So, it's, which is funny though, it's like, cause I see some, some trainers take some of the stuff that I've posted and then they go and try to teach that. <laughs> like, dude, you didn't come up with that. I'm like, hey. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's very funny. So when it comes to you being a top biller. And I get this question a lot, like when it comes to like, like doing interviews with people like yourself, what does your BD process even look like? Um, right now it's a little messy. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> it's uh, but when, I, when I'm in full flow, like I, I'm, which I will, I am as of tomorrow. Um, it, you know, a lot of it is, 
you know, the first thing I'll do is go through all my old clients. Old, you know, if I just worked on BP searches, I'll go through all the old candidates that I, you know, I made connections with and I presented and, you know, they know that I'm a good recruiter. It's just an easy call, right? You know, they've landed someplace potentially, you know, and one, if you're not doing it, you should make sure you click the little bell on every person you want to follow on LinkedIn, like every hiring manager and or sadly to, you know, Google alert. So if that person changes their LinkedIn page, you're, um, you're notified. And then you can see, oh, this guy just took, took a job. And if he posted it, he probably took the job like a month ago anyway, you know, by the time they do it or who cares, you get there early. Um, but you know, that's the easiest way to do B is BD is go after people, you know, but then, you know, just like I do with the candidates, here's my list of clients I want to go after. Here's some net new companies in XYZ space. So, you know, I'll give the list to, you know, I'll give the list to my admins that go find the VP of sales, the CRO, the head of pre-sales, whatever roles I'm doing. If they're not there, find the COO and CEO, put them on the list and they automatically get, automatically get those emails, you know, and it's the same process as the candidate side. Your car. You know, every, again, I think people overcomplicate both sides of it. Maybe I simplify it too much. I don't know, but has, and this is probably the first time I've, I've seen you talk a little more about outsourcing or having some help. Has having help helped you? Actually, no. No. It's uh, <laughs> Mark. Mark Whitney will kill me because he's dying to get me. He's dying for me to try more VAs, and I, I will actually try more VAs. Sorry. <laughs> no, my the I am horrible at using virtual assistants. Um, I'm just just doing everything myself. So I am probably the cause of the reason why he is not helpful. Um, you know, I, I've learned a lot. I'm actually in the middle of taking Mark's VA course, speaking of coaching, um, and how to use a VA. So I will, it's one of my many bucket list things to do this year is to get proper, properly use a VA. But like for me, and I, I don't really understand how other recruiters do it because I like to be so hands-on where I like to do the prep calls. I like to follow up after interviews. I like to, you know, schedule them myself. I like to, all those little touch points make a monster difference in the process and in the ability to connect with the candidate. So I'm very rarely surprised you know, if a candidate turns a job down or is going a different direction. But, you know, by the end of most of my processes and part of my VD, you get these guys in process they tell me where other, you know, you ask where else they're interviewing. And, you know, a lot of guys aren't going to tell you if you're just the voice in the phone at the beginning of the process, the end of the process. But if I hold their hand throughout the process, well, you know, now I know. And then I call, so, you know, make sure they know. I'm like, listen, if you're not going to take my job, let me know where else you're looking. Cause I don't want you to end up at some dumpster fire that I can't hire for you. Yeah. Right. Especially if it's a VP role and, you know, you built goodwill. You're honest with them about feedback. I'll tell them if I know anything or I don't know anything. Um, and you know, but if it's a dumpster fire, I, I will kindly ask if they want my real opinion and <laughs> most of them do. And then most of them don't take the job, you know, because we built a lot of trust and I don't know how to explain how to do, I don't know how to explain. I've had this question a million times, like how to explain how to build that trust with people. I, all I know is I come across very authentic, which I should, cause I am very authentic and no one ever questions the integrity. So, except internal recruiters. <laughs> but, uh, but thanks. That's all I want because they, it, it was so funny because it's a side note, but it was, they, they think you, that you want answers. You want the negative feedback. So you can, and why you got this negative feedback. I found this with internals because they think you just want to coach your candidates up. I'm like, to a point, but you want it so you know not to send the wrong people and how, what's going to fix. It's, you know, the coaching is you know, part of it, but you should never overcoach your candidate, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, that's a whole side sidebar. But um, okay. but that's that's all part of the BD. That's part of uh, the process. Well, I mean, and like digging a little deeper into this BD thing, do you do a lot of just like cold call for new business, MPC? Like what is it? How are you getting this business? Every way. Um, a lot of referrals, a lot of networking. Like I said, we start through you know, the contacts we know. Just like I do with candidates, I put them on a drip campaign. So they're going to get, you know, you know, basically about a hundred emails a day. We'll go out for BD, hundred emails a day. We'll go out for, for, um, for uh, 
candidates, you know, candidate emails. Um, and this year, which we should talk about is the whole Gmail change that's coming uh, as well, uh, which is going to be scary uh, and will change and people will start doing a lot more cold calling. It's my guess soon, but we'll talk about that in a sec. Um, do, you think, do you think more recruiters are actually going to pick up the phone and cold call? Hey, more business for me. So what's that? Hey, I kind of hope they don't, but it's, um, it, it's going to get scary, but, but I'm going to finish the BDs part, but the, you know, but anyway, once I get, I get, I do everything the same candidate side, it's the candidate side, the client side. It's not that all much different to call even. It's like, Hey, you're looking to open for an opportunity. Hey, you open to a candidate. You don't have to do this whole crazy sales pitch. It's, you can be very blunt and basic. Um, you know, people are either they need or they don't need. I'm not a big fan of like doing this hard press, hard colds, hard sell. Um, you know, it just, it's, I don't, it's necessary, but I, my emails and my, e my phone calls are twofold. I sometimes I just call and say, listen, I've been doing this for 28 years and placed, you know, almost 1100 people. And I can't believe we haven't talked before, but we know a thousand, literally a lot of, you know, LinkedIn will have 500 mutual contacts. Um, and then, then also do an NPC, you know, where I'm, Hey, I've got the, and I prefer NPC to be honest with you, where okay. you've got, um, Hey, I've got this great account exec or a great shell engineer who's done X, Y, and Z. Uh, what I still struggle with, to be honest with you, is I think personalization is great, but it's just so hard to do at scale. Um, you know, because I work, if you're in one niche, it's easy. I'm in all of software, too broad. I would never start this way again. I would never recommend anyone to do it this way. But I cover everything in software from fintech to, you know, analytics to security to storage, whatever. I, I just have a huge network, so it's hard not to anymore. But it means I can't do a super personalized message where I can say, hey, this is a great analytics, great AI, you know, candidate, because then I got to segment my my list. And I've tried it that way. And it's just, it's it's very difficult. Yeah, it just takes a lot of time. So um, we're working. And I know we have a lot of like questions uh, that we're going to be doing like after the podcast is done. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a bonus section. Um, but I, this question did stand out. If you had to actually start over again from zero, what would you do? I would literally pick a geo like Dave Stanerfeld, who's awesome. Um, and he's fighting, uh, this like third battle of cancer right now. Uh, he's a great recruiter. Um, in Pinnacle, he's, he's just awesome. Dave's the best. He covered, he was the man on the West coast. If you wanted a software sales job, everyone knew Dave, everyone. And that's how I would have done it. Like I, if I was to start over, I would do everything East coast, you know, just East coast, probably just East coast, just cause that's where I am. It's easier. There's enough business. Um, you know, maybe I do central and East. It's easy enough. Cause the time zones mountain to West get, get a little funky, but if I had to do it over, I would pick a geo and software's broad. And so I would probably pick analytics or automation or AI, whatever industry that I thought were hot or interesting at the time but i think being too broad like i am is can be a detriment but um and being too broad across the country can also be a detriment you know it's it, it everything's got its pros and cons so so real quick you you think that you're too broad mm -hmm. even though your focus is like software salespeople. i think my industry is too broad like i like like a lot of recruiters I know that do really well, like Dave is a great example. Just stick with Dave. He is just West coast, like 99% like database analytics kind of stuff, but, you know, in that general genre, um, <clears throat> you know, like I literally placed uh, guys in FinTech software last year, security software last year, risk software last year, analytics, AI, you know, and, uh, RPA, you know, all across the board. The good thing is for sales guys, you can be, you can go cross vertical fairly easily. But if I had to start over knowing what I know now, and I just focus, say, just security or just analytics. And now instead of having a database of hundreds of thousands of people in all walks of life, I have now 100,000 people just in the East Coast, just in analytics per se. You know, think how much more powerful it is. You know, yeah. I mean, it's it, it, like you know, it, it's it, you know, how, how many like how many how many pro athletes can play truly play 
multiple pro sports. They focused on one, you know, aside from a handful of folks, they're not making the majors in every league, right? So mm -hmm. it's, um, I just think it's the more laser focus you're in this business, uh, the better to an extent. So you got to have multiple roles you want to fill, but okay. then again, I'll get to this million dollar bills and pinnacle that they literally focus on two positions. You know, there's, and it's very niche in healthcare. Okay. And they crush it, you know, absolutely crush it. So I know uh, we recently interviewed uh, Michael Petrick and he was just like, yeah, I, I have this little box and this little box. And I know everything that goes on. Yeah. And I know every single person. So I beat everybody. And I'm like, yeah. good job on that. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's a great example. He's a great, he's a great example. Um, that's it. I mean, everyone tries to boil the ocean. Like, you know, I was talking to someone else. They're like, they really want to get into like your healthcare, but yet the work in construction jobs. And I'm like, and the guy's starting a podcast for healthcare, yet he's working construction jobs. And I'm like, well, what what are you doing? <laughs> like, it's like, what am I, what am I missing? <laughs> I mean, like, hey. it's just, you, you got to pick a lane and it's going to hurt at first, but you know, once you do it, you're going to be better off for it. Awesome. Oh, another question I have for you. Like, how do you measure your output? In, you know, in terms of what? I can guarantee you most recruiters don't know exactly how many calls they made, how many emails they sent, how many text messages they sent. How do you consistently measure your KPIs on a daily basis? Um, so Create has got a good reporting tool, number one. Um, and if you don't know how to use it, they will happily help you because uh, it is a little confusing. Um, and Ring Central, you know, um, you know, honestly, I just call, I call, they didn't want, they wanted to pay me, they wanted, wanted me to pay for the analytic component. I was like, that's great. But I'm going to sign up for another two year license. You got to give it to me for free. free. So they did, you know. So that was it. It was easy. It was, it was easy. Nothing for them to throw in, but it was a small win. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So at the end of the day, you're just hopping in at Ring Central and just like tracking what, what you did. Yeah. It's just, it, everything, well, everything's recorded, right? I mean, so yep. they record every call, every number, inbound, outbound, et cetera. Um, and then, you know, everything, if you've got it set up in Ring in um, Freelight as well, it's going to record all the inbound, outbounds. So you can kind of, you know, compare or contrast. Um, but you can also check all your emails and texts and everything else. So, um, yeah, but that's, I mean, it's the easy way to do it. Okay. I didn't yeah. know if there was like a whole other thing, like Excel spreadsheet where you're tracking everything or no, like no. notion, a notion, this notion that, no, you know, I mean, honestly, it's like, I used to just do like, if I'm, you know, I just like, if I'm just not focused on a certain day or I feel myself, I'm just kind of not there. I just take a pen of paper out. I just make tick marks every time I make a call, put a, you know, a dot or a line or whatever through it. If I connect with someone and I do it hour by hour and you can just, you do that for a few days, you're going to see just right in front of you, one, how many calls you're making, two, where's your productive time? Where is your tired time? Like I know for me, three o'clock, I'm usually like, oh, I need a snack. I'm getting lazy, tired, whatever. So I block it into my calendar now. And that's when I go through emails, um, you know, or return, you know, return voicemails or whatever. Okay. Um, you know, so it, it, it's just, so it keeps you focused. So it, Other, otherwise during the day, you're just going back and forth, email, create, email, create, and you're just, you're unproductive, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it cracks me up because I was, I was running a BD class for, for Mark and it would be guys in the class that are like, all right, I'm going to make 50 BD calls this week. I'm like, that's like 10 a day. <laughs> I'm like, unless you get through all 10, I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like. Or they're going to make 60 calls in total for the week in BDN outreach. Maybe I'm not old school. That's, I'm like, I don't know what you do all day then. Like, if you're not on the phone during prime calling hours, explain to me what you're doing with your day. Because I don't well, really understand. And I, th I think that's like kind of like what you're talking about where, like, and that's where I kind of what dug into the planning question a little bit. Because I think that one of the things recruiters do during the day is they're trying to figure out, spend the most of the day figuring out who they need to reach out to. When you and quite a few other people I've talked to on the podcast, like start the day knowing exactly who you're going to like try to get a hold of. Yeah. I mean, and I think, I think you're right. I mean, I think most recruiters are total, you know, what was it, a net paralysis by analysis kind of thing. And, well, let me do it during the day. This is like, they, they literally look at their job. I've talked to recruiters. They literally look at, well, it's five o'clock. I'm off. 
I'm like, no, dude, you work for yourself. You know, or even if you're working for someone else, you're a, your main goal is commission. You are still working for yourself. Um, you know, so whether you're technically your own boss or your own boss, this should be a commission driven business. And, and if you are not thinking like, that, you know, you are sorely wasting your time, you know, and, you know, hopefully you survive 2023 because most I know, you know, got a, got a tough year. You know, defense was great. Insurance is great. You know, <laughs> so, uh, there's a few industries that crushed it, but, um, you know, some were not as lucky finally. <laughs> so, hey, well, Rich, before we move on to the next part of the podcast, is there anything that you want to say about being a top biller? Uh, um, no, I mean, it's fun. You should try it. No, it's good. It, it's a, uh, no, it's, listen, it's, it is, listen, it, it is not about, I don't do anything different than anyone else. I can guarantee you I don't do things nearly as well as many, many other people I know. I just do more of it, you know, and I don't mind the grunt work. You, you, you're depending on what your goal is. My goal is to just be financially free and not have to worry about anything. And that's what the beauty of recruiting is because recruiting is an absolute life-changing position if you put the time in it, because there's very few businesses that truly, you know, give you what you put into it. And you don't have to be the smartest, you don't have to be the, the, the slickest. You, you, in this job, you really just have to be the most authentic and put the most effort. In. And it, that's really it. It does not, it's, it's truly planning an effort and, you know, maybe you give up, you know, you know, going to get beers on a Tuesday night to plan for the week or whatever. And to me, it's a small price to pay, especially, you know, as you get a little older, you got kids and other responsibilities, you know, you know, you want to be there for that. You want to have, be able to, as the kids get older, you want to be there for the, you know, their games and their sports and all other stuff. So make the sacrifice now so you can take the time later. So, awesome. you know, but that's it. That's it. That's it. Well, mo moving over to the quick fire questions. Brand new recruiter that's just getting started off in the recruiting industry. What advice would you give them to succeed? Um, I think like a lot of what we just said. I think you say you get a niche, you get focused, you find an industry that you are personally excited about. What's an industry that you want to read up on? You know, if you're going to get bored, you know, reading about, you know, defense technology or you're, you know, some crazy pacifist and, you know, can't believe certain people are right and wrong, <laughs> um, you know, then, um, you know, maybe you don't do that industry. Even if your boss tells you to do that industry, you know, do what you are excited about. I mean, it's the simplest way to do it. Work with passion. And you're excited. You're constantly excited about software sales. Dude, I think it's great. I mean, it's always changing. It's always something new. I mean, it's, and it, you know, the good and bad about being in multiple sectors and software is you can, you go where, where it can put yeah. <laughs> like, look at chat GPT and AI and all these companies. It's, it's. I mean, I think it's fascinating, you know, but, you know, my wife would find it boring as hell. So it's, uh, you know, it's, so you got to figure out what's, what's good for you. Right. <laughs> and the next question, like what advice would you give to recruiters that have been in the space? I think he did a great job this entire podcast answering that question. So we're going to skip that. What has been a favorite book you that's know, had an impact on your career? I am not a big reader. Believe it or not, um, I'm, I'm a, I've got serious ADD, which should probably be medicated at this point. But uh, I, I'm a big. I listen to podcasts like um, it's like what the hell is it? Sellers, uh, it's like Sellers Heaven or something like that. It's Thirty Minutes to President's Club is a good one. Uh, book wise, the last book I read that I loved was um, it related to work was um, Chris Boss Never Split the Difference. Hmm. Is there, I thought it was great. So many good lessons in that, but. Um, you know, I think a lot of it too, just, I just, you know, again, it goes back to having passion for the space. There's a million article, million newsletters for every industry. So find ones that you like, and you know, they've got five minute news on your industry. Read that, you know, every morning. And you know, not only does it give you clients and candidates to go after, but gives you insights. You can actually talk like, you know, what's going on, <clears throat> you know, do you ever listen to audiobooks? Have you tried those out? Um, well, once in a great while, but now okay. if, we're, if we're going, if we're going on a long drive, we're listening to our smart list or something. It's a great pipe. Okay. <laughs> so what, what is your favorite rec tech tool at the moment? Rec tech tool. Um, 
I mean, this is the thing. I think there's so many interesting tools, but I think there's so many posers out there. It used to be like, um, used to be a lot of LinkedIn tools that just basically made lists for LinkedIn for you, but didn't really do anything for you. Um, now there's a million AI tools that don't really do a lot for you other than what chat GPT, chat GPT could do. They claim it's better, claim it's this, claim it's that. I haven't seen one that's really markedly better personally. Um, I think, you know, like, I mean, like the, you gotta have a good, a good system, like an outplay, like for campaign management, that's probably the best. I mean, but like I was saying earlier with this Gmail one, there's another company I've been looking at called Send Now, which also I think they're AppSumo Gilens today, actually. But Send Now is, I was talking to the owner the other day, really cool software, really good. It's supposed to have amazing deliverability. You can even buy your own IP address through them. If you go to their Facebook group, they've got a whole cold call, cold email campaign book, like an 80 page guy. Um, I've had to do it in the YouTube videos and I had to even interact in, you know, put it into play. Um, but what he's doing is interesting. He's pretty much on the cutting edge of things. He is, he was the original guy, like reply.io and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so he was another guy. He was the second person to talk to me about, uh, Gmail issues. Like we were saying earlier, like Yahoo and Gmail are going to start blocking a lot of email, not just the big spammers, like we all read like besides thousand emails a day. No, yeah. apparently it's going to, they're going to start doing that for a lot of people. Um, not just the massive spammers, but if you get too many bounced emails, too many blacklists, too many ignore, too many take me off the list. Um, you know, Gmail is going to start blocking you very quickly, apparently. And so like his platform is going to be great for BD, but it will not allow you to send to a Gmail address. That's how serious. Oh, it. yeah. That's how serious this whole thing's going to be. Um, I saw a note in the comments. I actually bought that. I, I'm sorry for the listeners uh, when this goes live. I looked at it right now and it's at 22 hours left and this episode is going to be out in a few weeks. So I do apologize. <laughs> it, it's, it, I saw that. I was just like, what the hell is going on? I almost like returned it because I, like, I didn't know that was like the reason why, but now that makes sense. Yeah. So listen, it's 60 bucks. You might as well try it out. Um, the owner's a great guy. Um, you know, but, and their product is really good. It does a lot of cool things and they've got a great roadmap coming out. Um, so I think that one's going to be super interesting. Uh, listen, I hope he's wrong. Something in my gut tells me he's probably not. So he's, I don't know, better get used to cold calling again. <laughs> that or just double up on your LinkedIn credits. Um, because that's going to be super interesting if that really comes to fruition. Um, but that, and the other one I like right now that I've been playing with, and, and again, I, I, I'm just getting my hands around it, is Nebula. We play with that? Okay. No, not yet. Um, it's a pretty cool, it's a very cool chat GPT-like uh, sourcing tool where it'll even tell you government, you know, based on government taxes, tax returns, salaries, like actual, you know, uh, for the jobs, for the region, for everything. Like when you do your search, you'll say everyone in this search is, you know, job is $148,000 salary. You know, supposedly the most accurate, but it will also do email campaigns for you with AI. We'll write the email based on personalization from the LinkedIn profile. It's an interesting sourcing tool. Um, again, I like the, you know, Mike Evers or Evans is the, is the founder, interesting dude, nice guy. Um, the, it's interesting because it found people that I didn't find on LinkedIn, but then it didn't find people I did find on LinkedIn. <laughs> so. I'm like, it's still new. Um, it's got massive potential um, where you can, you, you can put the job order in, put the resumes in you like, and you can you know, run all the systems. And it's a pretty cool tool. Um, it's worth looking into that. Unfortunately, it's probably going up by the time this goes live also. <laughs> but the, uh, maybe he'll give you a discount for me. Um, but he, he, he it's, it, that's a pretty cool too as well. But um, yeah, I mean, other than that, man, I think probably most tools or time wasters. I look at them all. Give me a wrong. I'm the tech guy for Pinnacle. I'm on the, 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 the board as a tech chair. I love looking at them. I look at all of them, but if there's just a million of everything and most of them are the same as the original without a whole lot of creative difference, you know? So at least for the moment, your seven figure billing tech stack is Crelate, Outplay, Ring Central. Yeah. Ring Central. I use Foxit for PDFs. So I don't pay for Adobe and I 
purchased as well as sign docs and everything else. Um, I use track.ai and MetaView for um, uh, recording calls. I think MetaView is, does an amazing job for recruiting. It's built just for recruiting. Track AI is getting there. Um, and what else? I mean, I don't even pay for LinkedIn. I pay for sales nav actually, but um, I don't. Uh, I don't use LinkedIn Recruiter. I just okay. use free LinkedIn, and what else do I use? I mean, it's. I mean, I've got access to everything, but honestly, I don't use most of them. You know, uh, one tab is great for building lists for your admins. You know, if you, you want to just open instead of cut and pasting stuff, you just open tabs and right click and saves it to a list. Um. It's, yeah, it's funny. I, I look at every stupid tool under the sun and most of them are not worth the time. I mean, it's just, I wish they were. I, 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 this is why I love helping these companies out. Like when I find good ones, like, I mean, like Nebula and Outplay and Send Now, like I'm trying to help those guys out better it. And um, I think they're good tools. They just, some of them are they're really on. That's why they do the FC motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, when it comes to your own personal success, what do you think has been a huge driver for that? Just, I mean, I'm pretty, pretty straightforward. For me, it's complete sheer failure. That's it. I don't want to, you were afraid of failing. Absolutely. Every That's day. your biggest driver. Everything. It's, it's literally, it's the, yeah, I tell that to people and they're just, they don't buy it, but it is literally it. It's a, you know, I think most salespeople have faux confidence, you know? Everyone in a, in most billers I know have, you know, they're, they're, they know their stuff, but every time you go to do it, you're just like, Oh God, I mean, I, did I do it right? Am I going to do it right? How do you stay at this level? How do you make it work? Like, honestly, I'll be the first time. I, I do not fully understand why I am as good at this job as I am. <laughs> so, um, you know, I don't think I do particularly, particularly anything perfectly. Um, like I said earlier, but. I, I like, uh, as I, my daughter's very similar. She's very much a collector of people, you know, and I think I'm kind of the same way. I think, as I said earlier, if you're uh, true to who you are, you're authentic and you don't try to be something you're not, it makes your critic kind of easy. You know, okay. I mean, it's a lot of unfortunate things happen, but the basic of it is what makes you successful. It's not all the slick. Like, you know, like this guy's like, like Scott Love is a great example. You know, he's, he's got, he's like Danny Cato, great one lighter. She's got a big power presentation. Like he is so much more formal than I am, you know, so much more formal than I ever am. I mean, you look, I put a college shirt on today, you know, <laughs> so if I knew you were going to come like a slob, I would have left mine on. <laughs> the, uh, but I mean, it's, I don't know. I mean, I just, I get all these culture people. And I just talk about whatever has come to what, I mean, you have the TV on 24 seven. So I'm like, there's something crazy thing going on. I'll talk about it. I don't care if it's politics or, you know, one of these uh, third rail subjects, who cares? You know, it makes you real. People remember you. Even, and if you don't agree and you don't agree professionally or, or it's even better because you know, you can have an extra real conversation with someone. It's so, uh, I don't know. To me, that's, that's kind of it. <laughs> you know, awesome. so. Well, how about, and, and this is like the last question before we get wrapped up. <clears throat> if you could have a cup of coffee with yourself, go back early in your career, what would you sit down and tell yourself? Don't fucking worry so much. <laughs> I mean, seriously, <laughs> that would really truly be it. It's uh, like I said, fear of failure is a great driver, but it can drive you crazy. It's, uh, yeah. you know, so, but that's really it. I mean, it's very simple. You That's know, awesome. You over worry and you worry well, about the wrong thing. So, before we let you go, is there anything else that you would love to share with the listeners? No, just have your eye. Get yourself planned and organized, man, and have every day ready to rock. I mean, that's that's it. That's half the battle. You know, once you got it done, you might as well do it. So, don't plan during the day. That's the number one rule. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> Or let me, let me rephrase it. Don't spend your day sourcing. Know who you're calling. <laughs> exactly. It's about, it's be, make it very clear. Exactly. And you know, there's two things. I say this all the time. Like one, you're right. Don't spend your day sourcing. You should have that plan the day before. You can do that while you're watching TV on your laptop, you know, and if you need a bigger laptop, they're cheap now, buy a bigger laptop. <laughs> so you can do it. You can do it wherever. 
Um, and then whenever you're done with your day, you make that one last call. Always add one call to your day. It's an extra five calls a week. I say this all the time. It's five calls a week, 20 calls a month, 240 calls a year, whatever it is. And, you know, it's like getting an extra month worth of work out of it by making one dumb call. And you'll That's be amazed awesome. how many times that one call leads to the right candidate or that job order. So fantabulous. Well, Rich, I just want to say thank you for one, uh, coming back on. My pleasure. Uh, and you've, pleasure. you've impacted so many people in the recruiting community. Over the years, I've seen you just give, 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 and give on top of you billing and, and everything else that you do. So uh, thank you. Thank for the people that want to like follow you, how would they, or maybe <laughs> like, you know, check you out? So I'm maxed out on LinkedIn connections. You, know, you, yeah. got, you got 30,000. Um, so I kind of have been deleting people. So, but if you follow me, just hit the little bell. I think if you go to my profile, you hit the bell, you'll follow me. You can see okay. stuff I post. Um, you, know, you can follow me on Facebook as well. Um, but yeah, I, I wish I could connect to people send connections, but I end up having to delete them because I got to save those for clients. <laughs> so totally get that. But I'm, it's that's literally one of my admins' other jobs is deleting people on uh, old people, like any people in China and stuff. <laughs> LinkedIn just to you know, clear up space. But, awesome. Um, in any event, awesome man. Thanks for having me. It was fantastic as always. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Rich. And for the listeners, until next time, guys.